ignore_time_segment_in_scoring Everyone, welcome here in our studio in Sarakunda. This is Star TV News with me, Mayuni Jufadera. In the headlines tonight, the Safara Mangsingate Foundation donates medical equipment to the Janjumbre Health Center. Inspector General Job said, OIC Gambia acquired equipment will enhance police public order management capacity. The IGP presides over the laying of the foundation for the regional police headquarters in Upper River region. The Health Ministry urges video clubs to remain closed as four people tested positive for COVID-19 on Monday. On the international scene, United Nations orders probe into human rights abuses in Libya. Venezuela's rival leaders lock horns over gold in London vault. Hundreds of rescued migrants arrived in Italy. Well, those were the headlines and now the news in details. The Safar Mengsingata Foundation donated health materials to the Janjambre Health Center. The items are meant to support the health center in its drive to provide quality and efficient health services to the people of Janjambre and its satellite villages in the Central River region. Modo El Baji tells us more. Janjambure is the administrative center for Central River region. However, its surrounding villages depend heavily on its health center for their personal well-being, especially that of their women and children. Moreover, receiving such a gesture from the Safari Mansingate Foundation and its partners will empower the health center in its drive and complement government efforts in serving the aspirations of the people of CRR and its neighboring villages. The officer in charge of the Janjambure Health Center, Momodubari, noted that the government cannot do it alone. He thanked and also the donors that the materials will serve their purpose, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, this um, donation, I think, is timely and then it will go a long way in helping the people within Janjambure catchment area and as well as beyond. Um, just like I said before, health has no boundary. And then a healthy nation is considered to be a wealthy nation. Though the donation has um, come to Janjambre, but it's not limited to only Janjambre Health Centre. Uh, Janjambre is a district of its own on the southern part of CRR, but we cover 
some of the northern part as far as Same and some come all the way from Senegal at the border areas like Jamali, Tanu and all other places, the Kibiris and the like. They all come to seek for um, health uh, service delivery. So that is telling you health has no boundary. And I think it is definitely timely and we really appreciate the um, donation. The World Council Alaji Foon also took time to express words of gratitude to the donors. He further urged the health officials to make good use of these items. We are very much grateful to Safarman Singate Foundation through Mr. Fode Singate, um, uh, who is also a citizen, or whose both parents are citizens of this, this community here. And uh, him and the, and the foundation has been there for this community for many years. They have done a lot of things here and many times they have been uh, bringing different uh, types of supports to us here that are very much meaningful to us. And uh, we will continue thanking them and also to pray for them um, to be able to um, reach or to be able to um, reach their goal and be able to do. The foundation's representative, Fariman Jalo, named after the legendary Sir Fariman Singate, also calls on the health officers to ensure that the equipments are wisely utilized. I've been doing this do donation uh, since the, uh, the pandemic start. We donated a bag of rice to the needed, and during the Ramadan also we donated bread uh, to the to the community. You know, um, last week my uncle was speaking to one of the lady that Mrs. Delemon that uh, she has a diesel equipment that she would like to deliver to donate to the through Safarma Singer so that we can deliver to the Nyambre Health Facility. So we will thank uh, Mrs. Delemon for this good gesture. Okay, what is your message to the doctors and nurses? Yeah, uh, what I'm, go I'm going to report is about the uh, the nurses, you know, because mo m many people have been speaking here, like the, the council and the, the other people, about their competence. You know, they are very much competent. So I hope they will make sure that this, you know, health equipment, they will use it in a, in a good way. The foundation has been working tirelessly in order to put smiles on the faces of the less privileged individuals and communities, just like how the country's first governor did it for his people after the British rule. Reporting for Star TV, I am Modu Elbaji. The Gambia OIC Secretariat on Monday facilitated the presentation of 900 pieces of security gears and apparatuses from the friendly and broadly Republic of Turkey to the Gambia Police Force at the headquarters of the Police Intervention Unit in Kanifin. Zaklin Koli reports. The modern policing equipment were acquired through the resource mobilization efforts of OIC Gambia in preparation for the Heads of State Summit of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation in the country in 2022. The OIC Summit is the second largest gathering of world leaders after the United Nations General Assembly. The Turkish ambassador in the Gambia, His Excellency Tolga Bamek, did the honor of presenting the items which included protective garments, riot shield, gas masks, gas filters, plastic handcuffs, hand guards, head guards, buttons, among other vital safety and protective equipments. These sets of equipment will greatly enhance the capacity of the Gambia Police Force in public order management. The Inspector General of the Gambia Police Force, Honorable Mahmoud Job said while taking receipt of the materials. He extolled the great partnership between the Gambia and the Tokris Police Force, describing it as long-standing dating as far back as the First Republic. The Chief Executive Officer of OIC Gambia, Yankuba Diva, expressed gratitude and thanks to the Tokris government through the Ambassador for its continuous support to the ongoing preparation for the summit in 2022. Since our establishment in April 2019, the OIC Secretariat has benefited immensely from the goodwill of the Republic of Turkey, CEO Diva said. Highlighting various forms of capacity building training organized by the Tokris for the armed and security forces of the country in VIP protection, counter-terrorism, fingerprinting techniques, public order management and cross-border crime management. 
His Excellency Ambassador Togal Bamak said the large-scale summits require strong security arrangements as he reaffirmed the willingness of his government to continue supporting and sharing experience with the Gambia as the country prepares for the forthcoming gathering of world leaders. As part of its support to the OIC summit preparation, the government of Turkey provided capacity-building exercises in the country and beyond for several institutions including GRTS, diplomats, the police and other security agencies among others. The Secretary General and Head of the Civil Service, as well as the Minister of Interior, we are represented. Jacqueline Coley, reporting for Star TV News. The Inspector General of Police over the weekend laid the foundation stone meant to mark the commencement of the construction of original police headquarters in Upper River Division. Modi El Baje was there and he now reports. The motives behind constructing a divisional police headquarters are to centralize issues relating to policing within the region and to station other sections of the police together. However, the construction of sub-police stations within the region is also embedded in the project. The Inspector General of Police, Al-Haji Mohamed Job, urged the people of URR to embrace community policing and to work hand in glove with the security apparatus within the region. In URR, and I am proud as IGP to witness that historic moment. I associate myself to this new and good initiative to lay the foundation stone of a regional police headquarters, which is the first of its kind since the colonial time. I am happy to say that this development is initiated by somebody from URR. And I'm happy to inform the gathering that the contractor who is doing this project is also a URR born. And uh, the project will start soon, and the uh, target period is four months. We hope that by four months from today, God willingly, we will inaugurate the building. The building, as other speakers have already said, is going to consist of a ground floor and a uh, first floor, where most of the administrative setup of the police will be represented. The Regional Police Commissioner for URR, Ensa Baji, sees the opportunity to thank those who dip into their pockets in ensuring the actualization of this landmark project in Basse. I would also like to express my deepest appreciation to our supporting partners, and I'm still seeking more from all members of the parliament. Honorable Magazi, Bile Tungara, Honorable Kande, I know. I'm 100% sure you'll make a difference. And Haji Baniko, too, we have other projects that I would, I would seek a help from you people because you are the patriotic sons of this country and citizens of this Basel region. The government alone cannot do all, so we would seek for your help. The construction of the new divisional police headquarters will vividly help in addressing the, the problems of accommodating personnel of the police force and mitigate crime rate in the region. Moreover, this event was punctuated with presentation of certificates to various individuals and companies, as well as cultural performance. Reporting for Star TV, I am Modu El Baji. During its 83rd national situation report since the confirmation of the first case of the novel coronavirus disease in the Gambia on the 17th of March 2020, the Ministry of Health confirmed four new laboratory cases of the COVID-19 registered on Monday, bringing the total number of COVID-19 cases ever confirmed in the country to 41, thereby urging video clubs to remain close that a charm filed in this report. The Ministry of Health said that four people, including a six-month-old baby, tested positive for the deadly disease, and one of the new cases is Lower River Region's first confirmed COVID-19 case. The Ministry said case 38 is a 24-year-old Nigerian male who was originally residing in Senegal until he ventured to seek employment opportunities in the Gambia and arrived at the border on the 17th of June, where he was picked up and taken into quarantine. A sample was collected from him and a positive test result came out on the 20th of June. Case 39 is a Gambian, antenatal mother with an elaborate travel history. 
case for Thi is a six-month-old Gambian male who, with his mother and sister, came back from Senegal on the 19th of June and were picked from the border and taken into quarantine on the same day, while both his traveling companions tested negative for COVID-19. His test returned positive on the 21st of June. Case 41 is a 42-year-old male with dual citizenship. Gambian and Senegalese, who came back from Senegal on the 19th of June and was picked up from the border and taken into quarantine on the same day. His sample was collected on the 20th of June and a positive test result for COVID-19 came out on the 21st of June. Other new case came two days after a Marabo died from the virus bringing the number of deaths to two. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Health recommends video clubs to remain closed despite the receptions of European Football League. A government hopes to come up with a more suitable alternative for quarantine, target mass testing, plan for high-risk areas, more security presence at all points of entry around the country to ensure no person are smuggled. Reporting for Star TV News, I am Dado Cham. The newly appointed police commissioner to Basse Upper River Region and Sabaji over the weekend called for reinforcement of police officers in his division. Commissioner Baji made this clarion call during a ceremony earmarked for the construction of regional police headquarters in Basse. Modu El Baji witnessed the ceremony and Hina reports. Ensa Baji was appointed as Commissioner of Police in Upper River Region in order to address the issue of cattle theft and drug peddling in the region. However, his appointment is yielding dividend as he mitigates most of the problem faced by the people of URR. During his remarks at the ceremony, the Police Commissioner of URR Ensa Baji seized the opportunity to highlight some of the key challenges he faces in policing his region. In the same vein, I urge an increase in the number of personnel in our division, and mobility is our main concern. Mobility is our problem, and I appeal to you, sir, with due respect. We would prefer to have these buffaloes. If you look at this region, it's the hottest region in this country. If pickups are sent to this country, they could not last long. So the only vehicles that could last long are the buffalo type, the Toyota Corollas, they can last long, sir. Once again, I would appeal you to you again. The strength of the URD is so small compared to other regions. The strength of URD is about 110 and 120 police officers, the entire region, compared to other regions. For example, Serekunda, and Kanifi municipal area. The strength there is more than the strength of URD 20 to 30 times, of which I'm appealing for you to send more officers. The campaign is coming nearer. The campaign is coming nearer. The election is coming nearer. I would once again appeal again to have a platoon of PIU officers. Because the PIU officers that are stationed at Fatoto they are overstretched. If there is a problem, only three people remain at the base. Talkless of our officers, most of them are moved without any replacement. I would appeal to you, you put that into consideration so that the stations would be re reinforced and will get good mobility that the officers would use on patrol grounds and on, on their official duties. In response to Commissioner Baji's request, the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Job, assured the people of URR for a swift response to challenges revealed by the Police Commissioner. Particularly from the Algalo and from the Chief of Base, with regards to expansion of police outlets, I am putting the burden back to you to say, identify where my officers are going to be in the next two weeks I will deploy. Together we can fight crime. The National Assembly member for Fuller the West, Honorable Mohamed Magasi, underscored the role he played in putting the issues hindering the police officers before the parliament. He noted that the government cannot do it alone by itself. The government needs to do something, but not only the government, but the people in the country, especially those in the region. So this matter has been pushed well before today to the relevant authorities. But as we say, the government is not in that capacity to be able to satisfy everybody at the same time. 
That's why the citizens have to take ownership of the development of their own area. The government is doing what we are contributing to form the revenue of this country. It is not sufficient to answer to the expenses of this country. You know every year that the, the, our, our budget is in deficit. That to show that all the programs, all the projects that are to be implemented in this country will be financed with the sources from the government. So that's where we call on the philanthropists and concerned citizens so that the little they have, we they can offer for their brothers, their sisters to live in unsafety and enable environment to do so. But this matter has been pushed and the government did not give a deaf ear. But as I told you, if you want to do it, you don't have the means with, with you to, to do it, at the end, you will not do it. As the country is heading towards the 2021 election, adequate security and mobility is paramount in ensuring stability during the course of the election. Likewise, correcting the issue of cattle theft and drug peddling in the region. Reporting for Star TV, I am Modu Elbaji. Well, we'll now go for a short commercial break. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs> I'm going to go to the house. Sani moli abla le kata fang kata depo nyinto hani ni futa taje depo to sani buka wafi de kako do ta mo buka ka 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 boto di la wobo sani wobo tale sani mimbe kering wole nyinto ko reliance ipita wolto ye kodo jo ni kodo jo reliance ika risito di la risito ni ngaku matal de wo risito ni ni adi la ika wole samba depo nyinto ni risito di ye la ye la jamba no soto komi ngi ye kumo funya mi ngamu ele ni mfana bora jamko tenge mbira jamba no sana. GGC, William Gambia Groundnut Corporation. Wolle be marare nying jambando la kola. Ando ila nying jang, ngalo nende nying jambando niya ke jang. Ifa 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 mba fola nyela. Tumando baro, me jambando kaya lefana ngajibe. Nimbore ya, mita wolto, mita mita sekolo direct. Nita re direct me jambando sana. Orang bading orang ni wede nyul nada kerana mula dah handi. Jiji si kajam bandu dah telah mula fadil si cemewar gula. Hei, nyom alat yang tu balik. Batu waktu nimbur bayat angkat anda jam bandu la kudojo. Orang jang misal misal saya membuat tulen angkat afu reliance angkat anda jam bandu la kudojo jet angkat angkat anda risiko tang angkat adepo. Walla ngaji be CPMS katu nyut la full demi suri arah nerek nintar ngaji ojem benda jam bandu sot lag. Al nimbar bak ala barca. Welcome back after that short commercial break and we now look at the news beyond our borders. The UN stop rights but they ordered a fuck finding mission after the discovery of mass graves in Tahunda. Previously a stronghold of Haftar and his forces recently recaptured by forces allied to the internationally recognized government. Libya's government forces are now positioned to the west of the city. They are demanding Haftar forces retreat from the strategic city. There are divisions both inside Libya and among the international players involved in supporting the two sides. Al Jazeera's Raul Abodin Manli reports. The discovery of more bodies in southern Tripoli. The military says the bodies belong to people kidnapped by forces of warlord Khalifa Haftar. And it's not the first. The UN's top rights body ordered a fact-finding mission after the discovery of mass graves in Darhuna previously a stronghold of Haftar and his forces. After a 14-month military campaign to take control of the capital, Haftar failed. The internationally recognized government recently recaptured Tarhuna 
along with other towns in Western Libya. And on Monday, the chief international criminal court prosecutor said in a statement, she will not hesitate to expand investigations and potential prosecutions to cover any new instances of crimes. But there is a possibility of more violence to come. Libya's government forces are now positioned to the west of Sirte. They're demanding Haftar's forces retreat from the strategic city. On Monday, the US ambassador to Tripoli and the head of Africa Command met with Libya's Prime Minister Fayez al-Sarraj. They discussed efforts to stabilize the country, but also how Egypt has weighed in on the conflict. Egypt's president, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, has threatened military intervention if GNA forces advance towards Sirte. Sirte's government calls the threat a declaration of war, and the UN spokesman gave this warning. Uh, the last thing that Libya needs right now is more fightings, more, uh, more military mobilization, uh, more transfer of weapons, uh, more presence of either foreign fighters or mercenaries. And there's been more finger pointing. In an official meeting with Tunisian President Kaya Saeed, French President Emmanuel Macron warned against Turkey's intervention in the conflict. I have already had the opportunity to make this very clear to President Erdogan. I now consider that Turkey is playing a dangerous game in Libya and is in breach of all the commitments it made at the Berlin conference. Turkey has intervened in recent months, providing support to government forces. France has been accused of supporting Haftar politically, something it continues to deny. Macron has also spoken to US President Donald Trump by phone. The leaders agreed on a need for a ceasefire in Libya and the resumption of negotiations. But with clear divisions between international figures weighing in on the conflict, there remains the question, will these divisions lead to more scenes of destruction in a country torn apart by years of war? Laura Badamani, Al Jazeera. The right to access Venezuela's riches is a dispute intervened with the right to rule the country. Venezuela's rival leaders, President Nicolas Maduro, and his western back opponent, Juan Guaido, began a legal battle on Monday over $1 billion of the country's gold held in the Bank of England. Al Jazeera's Sonia Galago reports. Far from Venezuela lies some of its most prized riches. 31 tons of the country's gold is held here in the vaults of the Bank of England for safekeeping. Now there's a legal battle over who can access it. President Nicolas Maduro or opposition leader Juan Guaido. Maduro says he needs the bullion to help fund the country's crumbling healthcare system during the coronavirus pandemic. However, attempts by Venezuela's central bank to access the gold began two years ago just after Maduro won a contested election. The Bank of England never released it, and then said last year it would recognize Juan Guaido as the interim president, not Maduro. Despite that, Maduro's lawyers say that diplomatic actions since had shown Britain still recognized him as Venezuela's leader. Well, ineffectively, we have recognized that the Maduro government is a de facto government. De facto means it's actually in control, running the state. For example, the BCV, the central bank, were my client. The president's name appears on the, on the currency note. He has an office. The ad hoc board has no office in Venezuela. They say somewhere in Washington. Why those lawyers said the bullion is his to control, as the British government and more than 50 others around the world said they would recognize him as interim president. However, Guaido's attempts to create a transitional government have been unsuccessful. There's questioning over Maduro's capacity and transparency in dealing with humanitarian aid. And I think that's also one of the main problems, not only in terms of legitimacy, but also in terms of the convenience to transfer those funds uh, to that administration. Sanctions and mismanagement have crippled Venezuela's economy and triggered a humanitarian crisis. Lawyers say the gold reserves amount to about 15% of its much-needed foreign currency reserves. The case is set for another three days and could set an important precedent in relation to other frozen Venezuelan assets around the world and just who gets access to it. 
Sonia Gallego, Al Jazeera. Hundreds of migrants rescued from smugglers' boat in the Mediterranean Sea have arrived safely in Sicily. It's the first time a rescued ship has been allowed to dock in Italy since ports were closed in April because of the coronavirus pandemic. Al Jazeera's Victoria Gadinbay reports. It's the first time these migrants have slept in days. They survived the journey across the Mediterranean from Libya to Europe, but only just. They were saved by a rescue ship run by the German aid organization Sea-Watch. As the migrants were brought ashore in Sicily, their dream of a better life is by no means guaranteed. First, they're being transferred to a quarantine centre where they'll spend the next two weeks. The 211 people on board the German ship were rescued from three separate boats last week. 70 people, mostly Africans, were crammed into this boat reported to be in distress last Wednesday. No big movements, okay? The following night, another rescue operation was underway. Then on Friday, a further 67 migrants, mainly from Africa and Bangladesh, were saved about 70 kilometers off the coast of Lampedusa. They'd been without water for two days. This is happening because of uh, the uh, uh, war and the conflict ongoing in, in Libya, which pushes uh, a lot of people uh, moving, uh, moving on and not necessarily staying in Libya to earn, uh, earn a salary. For years, Italy was the main route into Europe for migrants and refugees. But a crackdown on people smugglers in Libya led to fewer Mediterranean crossings. This year, there's been an increase with nearly 6,000 people landing in Italy so far. That's almost double the number in the same period last year. This is the first time Italy's allowed a rescue ship to dock since the government closed ports in April because of the coronavirus pandemic. This summer, the expectation is there'll be many more boats that will need rescuing, full of people risking their lives in the hope of finding work in Europe. Victoria Gatenby, Al Jazeera. Well, before we end the news, a quick recap of our main headlines. The Safaramang Singati Foundation donates medical equipment to the Janjambre Health Center. Inspector General Job said OIC Gambia acquired equipment will enhance police public order management capacity. The IGP presides over the laying of the foundation for the regional police headquarters in Upper River Region. The Health Ministry urged video clubs to remain closed as four people tested positive for COVID-19 on Monday. The UN Stop Rights body ordered a fact-finding mission after the discovery of mass graves in Tahuna, previously a stronghold of Haftar and his forces, recently recaptured by force allied to the internationally recognized government. The right to access Venezuela's riches is a dispute interwin with the right to rule the country. Venezuela's rival leaders, President Nicolas Maduro and his western Bank opponent, Juan Guaido, began a legal battle on Monday over $1 billion of the country's gold held in the Bank of England. Hundreds of migrants rescued from smugglers boat in the Mediterranean Sea have arrived safely in Sicily. Well, that's all for this edition of the news. Please do enjoy the rest of our programs and join us tomorrow for more news. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.